So what are we going to cover today? Um, we'll briefly cover who IGD is for those of you that aren't aware and what we've set out to do as part of this work. Rachel's then going to cover the top line insights from our extensive research and I will then go on to talk about the labelling messages, uh, what we've developed and how you can all get involved. So who is IGD and what was the aim of this, of this work? So for those of you that aren't aware, IGD is a charity. We work with food and drink companies to ultimately benefit the public. We work in many different areas, which this slide highlights, including sustainability, waste, skills and careers, and of course, health and nutrition. Uh, we've done a lot of work in health and nutrition across many areas. Um, and as you'll see from our current activities, um, they're really wide, um, uh, wide varied on reformulation, increasing fibre, healthy eating in the workplace, as well as our work on nutritional labelling. And we actually have a really long heritage in nutritional labelling, as IGD were actually uh, responsible for developing the GDAs for back of pack with our industry nutrition strategy, strategy group way back in the mid 90s. So what did IGD set out to achieve? The UK is actually in a great place with regards to front of pack nutrition, and it's estimated that over 80% of products currently carry the front of pack nutrition information. However, we know that there are still a lot of consumers that do not use or don't understand this information, and therefore a huge opportunity to help people make better use of this information. Our aim is to help and inspire more shoppers to use nutrition labels more often to make healthier choices. So we wanted to understand how shoppers use labels today and the barriers to use and then find solutions to overcome these barriers. And our aim is to now share these solutions as widely as we can to help drive greater use of nutrition labels. Um, just to clarify at this point, this work is not about redesigning the label, but to better utilize the system we have in place that's already widely adopted. And we know from our research that shoppers would welcome help and labelling is under more scrutiny than ever before due to the focus from people like Hugh Fernie Whittingstall and other NGOs. I'm now going to hand over to Rachel, who will take you through some of the key insights from our research. Thanks, Hannah. So Hannah, as Hannah's mentioned, I'm now going to take you through how we went about uncovering the main barriers and the areas of confusion around nutrition information on PAC, and then I'll summarise what the key insights were. So we set out to understand the biggest areas of shopper confusion around nutritional labels and the main barriers to use. This slide briefly describes the research journey that we've been on. Through 2015 and 2016, we carried out four rounds of extensive research, beginning with a review of the published work on this topic, through to testing in stores, discussing at focus groups, and testing adapting um, the messages with shoppers. The desk-based research gave us an insight into the evidence that was already available around consumers' understanding of nutrition labels. The in-store interviews and eye-tracking exercise gave us first-hand experience of the shopper journey and how nutrition labels influence choices and behaviours, if at all. And finally, the focus groups allowed us to deep dive into the thoughts of consumers and allowed us to test the messages. All of this was supplemented with our quantitative Shopper Vista online survey, where shoppers were asked a number of health-related questions, and amongst these were questions specifically on nutrition labelling. So all in all, um, we involved over 6,000 consumers in our research, so it's very robust. All of our research is freely available on our website, so please do take a look after the webinar. So what did we find out? From our research, we know that shoppers look for shortcuts, such as health claims, to help them identify the healthiest products. However, a significant amount of shoppers are feeling confused and sceptical about nutrition information and health claims. About a quarter of shoppers actively use nutrition labels, which leaves a large number who are not. Here you can see on this slide that 52% of people surveyed do not believe most health claims made by food companies. And we also know that there's a lot of misunderstanding when it comes to nutrition labelling, with 40%, 46% of shoppers finding nutrition information on pack too difficult to read. Lack of time and understanding were also cited as barriers to reading nutrition information on pack. So this paints quite a bleak picture, but there is some good news. Our research tells us that despite the challenges, shoppers do want to use this information more often, with 46% of shoppers believing that they should be referring to nutrition information on pack. A 
similar number are open to learning more about nutrition labelling or information so that they can make more informed choices. And so this provides us with a unique opportunity to help shoppers demystify nutrition labels. Alongside all of this, we also found that one of the biggest barriers um, to use was inconsistency. We know that shoppers are shopping um, in a variety of stores and across multiple channels. And because of this are exposed to a wider range of brands and product packaging than ever before. Here on this slide, you can see that 72% of shoppers agreed that it would be easier to understand food labels if they were consistently displayed across all products. So our research confirmed that nutrition labelling is used and is valued by some shoppers, but for the majority of people, there are limiting factors which lead to confusion. Barriers include confusion around terminology, the time needed to make comparisons, and the difficulty of tracking nutrition across the whole diet. If shoppers do refer to nutrition information, they are more likely to look at ingredient lists or a specific element on front of pack, such as sugars, fat, or calories. So demystifying the confusion associated with nutrition labelling is a key way in which we can help. So to summarise um, the main barriers and confusion, um, the areas included portion size. So we actually found that few people were looking out for portion sizes and hardly anyone used portion size information to compare products. Portion size rarely influenced behaviour choices and many did not believe the portion size stated on pack. As for calories, most people knew where to find calorie information, and most people concentrated on the things they wanted to avoid, e.g. Uh, reducing sugar or salt, rather than calories themselves. But there was also a high awareness um, of the amount of calories they could, should be consuming a day. Reference intakes were also a large area of confusion, there was some awareness of these, but however, few were actively using them um, and people identified many barriers regarding them. So understanding what reference intake is and how it works, how reference intake links to traffic light colours, what's the reference intake and how does it li link to the average person, and then how does it link to individual nutrients. And going back to the point on inconsistency, this is also a key challenge for consumers. So just using one product category here, cereals, as an example, even among front of pack adopters, there's a huge variation in the way labels are presented. So here we can see some on the bottom left, some we can see on the bottom right, some on the top left, and some on the top right. So this in itself can lead to confusion for the consumer. Where do I find the information? It looks different between different brands, so does it mean the same thing, and so on. So our research has uncovered a lot of challenges for consumers in relating to front of pack information, and this has painted quite a bleak picture. But once again, I've already mentioned there is some good news, and that once the barriers are identified, we can provide the solutions to overcome these. I'll now pass back to Hannah to talk through these. So having identified these key areas of confusion with regards to using front of pack nutrition information, we set out to develop messages to tackle these key areas. So we have developed a set of explanatory messages that fall under the areas that consumers are most confused by. And as Rachel said, these are portion size, energy, reference intake, and also the colour coding. The colour coding was broadly understood, but there was still some confusion. To ensure the messages are widely understood, we've worked with marketing and behaviour change experts, as well as nutritionists, and we then thoroughly tested the messages through consumer focus groups. And we've also consulted widely with uh, food and drink industry, uh, NGOs, as well as healthcare professionals and the government. The messages are designed to be used in any consumer facing communications. Um, there are two guides, one for industry and one for other organisations. Both use the same messages, though. The overall framing for the messages is know your label and then specific know your messages have been developed under each of the key areas. We've developed what we're calling both core messages and support messages. The core messages contain the headline information as a single message and are designed to be used where there is limited space, for example, point of sale, maybe in social media, digital displays. The support messages provide a bit more detail, 
for the more engaged consumer and where space allows for additional information. So this may include website copy, leaflets, emails, etc. The messages have been designed so they can be used together to talk about all areas of the label or in isolation, for example, if you wanted to focus on a particular aspect. This means uh, that, for instance, you don't use the colour coding, you can still utilise the other messages around calories, portion size and reference intake. We've also created a toolkit which contain the messages that I've talked about and also images for you to download and use in your communication material. These are suitable for a wide range of channels from social media posts, website banners, posters and much, much more. And we know that many organisations are already starting to use these. And here's just a few examples of what the uh, messages might look like in situ. So there's a magazine advert here, hanging banner, till divider, a trolley poster, etc. Just to give you a, a rough idea how the messages could be used. So as a reminder, this is the guides that you can download from our website. So please do download them if you haven't done so already, along with our toolkit. So you can start implementing our messages and help people to better understand front of pack labels. The website link is on this slide, which will be circulating after the webinar. So earlier this year, when we launched our guide, we received uh, support from Public Health England and the quote here from uh, the chief exec is on this slide. And the slide shows the companies that already committed to adopting the IGD messages in their communication and some have already started to implement. So it's great. We've already got some um, amazing support for our work. And here's just a few examples. Um, uh, these, this one is uh, a couple of website shots, one from Kings Mill and one from Sainsbury's of them explaining uh, what the different aspects of the label is. Some using our images um, and both using our wording. This next example is from the Morrison's website and also an e-magazine from Musgrave. And this next one was from the Waitrose Weekend magazine that was a couple of weeks ago and a slide from some internal colleague training that Breaks have been delivering. So please do consider all the different ways that the messages could be incorporated to reach your various audiences. So alongside the messages to increase awareness and understanding of front of pack nutrition labels, we also wanted to tackle the issue of inconsistency in presentation of front of pack nutrition labels. And as you'll remember from earlier on, that was a key um, issue identified in our shopper research. So for that reason, we've also created a solution to help tackle this issue. To help bring about greater consistency, IGD have developed a free best practice guide, which contains a series of gold standard recommendations. And these aim to encourage greater consistency in the presentation of front of pack nutrition labeling. The recommendations build on existing regulations and government guidelines and include recommendations for the design, presentation and position of front of pack nutrition information to bring about greater consistency. They are based on evidence from our consumer research and we have worked closely with semiotics experts as well as marketing agencies, regulatory experts and artwork designers. We are encouraging companies to migrate towards a more uniform approach when displaying front of pack information. And it's ideal for those who want to start applying front of pack nutrition labelling as well as those who already do. So here are some examples of the areas where we have guidance. Um, things like contrast within the lozenge, shape of the lozenge and display of reference intake information. And we're already seeing some great work with companies like Tesco's and Musgrave adopting these guidelines. So now we've gone through what's available, Hannah's going to tell you, how you what you can do to help. So how can you get involved? So please do, as I've said, download our free guides and toolkit and help your customers and clients to better understand nutrition labels by adopting our messages and our images. And please do where you can publicize and encourage further adoption of the messages via communication channels. And please do get in touch and let us know how you're getting on to share the great work that you're doing. In terms of what's next, um, if you want to stay up to date um, with regards to this work stream around nutritional labelling um, and our other areas of the Healthy Eating Programme, please do sign up for our Healthy Eating newsletter for um, more regular updates and we'll let you know how to do that after the webinar. 
We'll also be holding uh, a workshop at Food Matters Live later this year. And this is going to be a great opportunity to get more people involved, but also to showcase how the messages are being used. So please do send in your examples. We'll be circulating the dates uh, after this webinar. And finally, um, as I keep saying, do let us know what your plans are and how you want to adopt our messages and help more people use front of pack nutrition more effectively. So thank you everyone for listening today. Um, I hope you found it useful and do stay in touch.